chapter 7 of the book, God titled Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. Dictated to me by God at his command and direction. We put this book of some 215 or so pages. And there's a summary to every chapter, all 50 chapters. There's a summary, a, par a paragraph or two. It's about 35 pages long, if I remember right. Which is very handy. Okay, this is uh, chapter 7. And, and it, this was done just as he did it with Moses. I am the prophet like Moses. And if you'll see chapter 6, you'll see a greater discussion of that and elsewhere. But there's a real good discussion on it in uh, chapter 6 at the end. Okay, this is in three parts, three different little stories. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the break of dawn. When he saw that he had not prevailed against him, he wrenched Jacob's hip at its socket so that the socket of his hip was strained as he wrestled with him. Then he, the man, said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But he, Jacob, answered, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Said the other, What is your name? He replied, Jacob. Said he, And this is God speaking through him because of the words. Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with beings divine and human and have prevailed. You can't prevail against God. That's just part of the story. But he was there. Jacob wrestled with a man. And Elohim, God, spoke to him, and his name was changed to Israel. Jacob said he had wrestled with man and divine beings. The mysterious being who wrestled with Jacob is first called a man, then Elohim, God, but Hoshi refers to him as a Malik. Why Hoshi? The Hebrew Bible frequently calls an angel the Malik of God and can also mean messenger. Well, that would be the word of the Lord, the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. Jacob wrestled with a man, not a mysterious being. The divine beings are God and the angel of his presence. God and his Holy Spirit had lighted upon the man who wrestled with Jacob, and God spoke through him to Jacob. The man was a host of the Lord's hosts with one purpose. A host is discussed in the next segment. Judaism interprets this account to be Jacob wrestling with an angel. The angel of God's presence was there, Jacob wrestled with a man. God's stories are always based on actual events and are used for many purposes, such as conveying his teachings and establishing religious beliefs. In this story of the account of the night Jacob wrestled with a man and divine beings, Elohim says Jacob's name was changed to Israel. For you have striven with beings divine and human and have prevailed. Jacob says in verse chapter 32, verse 31, <laughs> not sure which book that is, I guess uh, it's in the Torah. I have seen a divine being face to face, yet my life has been preserved. Well, he thought the divine being, he was looking at him that this mysterious being was a man in divine beings. Uh, you cannot see God. You cannot see spirit. The human eye cannot see them. The divine beings are God and the Holy Spirit, and there is not the slightest possibility that Jacob could prevail if God did not want him to for this account in the Bible. God is absolute power. And Jacob says he had seen a divine being, and yet he only saw the man. You cannot see God or the angel of his presence. They have no form or image. Jacob saw a host of the Lord's host and believed him to be a divine being or a mysterious being. <coughs> the 
Jewish people have striven with the world for thousands of years and are still here, prevailing over all those who sought to destroy them that are no longer here. It is the Jewish people's great faith and love of God and being the chosen people and their pride in the book he gave them that has preserved them. They are not just his chosen people. They are his special people, and they know it. And it lifts them in times of need and strife that seemingly never end. That's up to you. This is part two. The account of a man who identified himself to Joshua as a Gentile and captain of the Lord's hosts in the book of Joshua is the first and only time the scripture describes a host of the Lord's hosts. The captain of the Lord's host is a host. This is from Joshua chapter 5 verses 13 through 15. Once, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing before him, drawn sword in hand. Joshua went up to him and asked him, Are you one of us, an Israelite, or our enemies? He replied, No, I am captain of the Lord's host. Now I have come. Joshua threw himself face down to the ground, and prostrate, and prostrating himself, said to him, What does my Lord command his servant? The captain of the Lord's host answered Joshua, Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua threw himself to the ground before a man, a Gentile, by admission, with a drawn sword, that he just told him that he was not an Israelite and said, What does my Lord command his servant? The man said he was a captain, not a Lord or the Lord. The, answer, the captain answered, Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. These are the exact same words God spoke to Moses at the burning bush through the angel of the Lord. These words show you the captain, the God is speaking through the captain. Because those wouldn't be necessarily, I guess, the captain's word other than to alert him the Lord is here. And if the Lord is there with the captain, so is the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. God is with the captain, and where God is, so is the angel of his presence. A man in divine beings is a host of the Lord's host. The captain said, Now I have come. And he is never mentioned in the scripture again. He's a harbinger of God's righteous servant, Moshe, upon whom the Spirit of God alights, making him a man in divine beings, because God alights upon him too. <clears throat> a man in divine beings, which is a host of the Lord's host, a Gentile who arrives in the time to come of the prophecy of Jeremiah 31 in the day of the Lord, and that would be me, harbinger of me, as God's righteous servant Moshe, prophet like Moses and Elijah. Four righteous men, one description, and that description fits me. God orchestrated my life from birth, so that I would fit these, a life of suffering, pain, sorrow, familiar with disease, afflicted by God, which means disfigured at birth. But he didn't speak to me till I was 50 years old. My life sure didn't seem like one that God was with. And, and this is something he wanted. I was an atheist for 50 years. And it was so he could teach me as a blank slate. No preconceptions, no ideas about any religion or anything else. And I've learned quite a bit. Okay, part three. This is the last part. The Lord appeared to him, Abraham, by the terebinths of Mamre. He was sitting at the entrance of the tent 
as the day grew hot. Looking up, he saw three men standing near him. As soon as he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them. And bowing to the ground, he said, My lords, if it please you, do not go on past your servant. That's from Genesis. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I in truth bear a child old as I am? Is anything too wondrous for the Lord? I will return to you at the time ne this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. The Lord is symbolized in this story where he appeared and spoke to Abraham by the terebinths of Mamre as three men standing near him. The three men represent a host of the Lord's host, a man with divine beings. It is three persons. There's three persons right here. My person, Keith, the presence of God who is a person, and the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit, who is a person. Three persons, one body. It's very difficult. The Lord and the angel of his presence with the Lamb. Two of the men are described as angels in the next chapter of Genesis. They are only men in this chapter for the purpose of symbolizing a host of the Lord's host. Okay, next chapter is chapter 8. The first host of the Lord's host, and that would be Adam. Uh, no, the angel of the covenant. Oh, in creation, it's Adam.